said, sure, for only a nickel you can find a job and an apartment. And bada bing, bada boom, you're a grown up. <laughs> On Shirley's reaction, cut to exterior Milwaukee City Street, Laverne and Shirley are walking down the block, Laverne with newspaper in hand. Shirley says, I think we should look for an apartment first so we can figure out how, how well the jobs would have to pay us. Cut to interior, stylish apartment, Laverne and Shirley and a, and a rental agent. Rental agent says, It's a great view. Has a terrace, a working fireplace, and all your utilities that are included. The Vernon says, Included. <laughs> Shirley says, Look, Vern, we each have our own bedroom. This is it. I don't want to look any further. <laughs> Randall Lady says, Well, we need a two year lease, and we give you your first and last month's rent free. Shirley, Free! The <laughs> <laughs> Vernon says, How much? We focus on the rental agent, she says. 550 a month. Cut to a two-shot of Laverne and Shirley. Their faces are frozen. <laughs> the camera lingers on them. Cut to a card reading, number four, career choices. <laughs> Laverne and Shirley walking down the street, each with a newspaper in their, in their hand. Shirley says, the idea, Laverne, is to work at something enjoyable, Make a lot of money at it, and have it provide scads of opportunities to meet eligible men. I'll settle for one out of three right now. <laughs> he says, you think small. The man says, I don't even care which one. <laughs> Cut to exterior Acme Model Agency. Day, the Vernon Shirley walk out dejectedly through the front door. Cut to exterior TWA Stewardess School. Day. Laverne and Shirley walk out the front door with a combination of dejection and anger. Cut to exterior Arthur Murray Dance Studio. Cut to the interior of the dance studio. Laverne and Shirley are performing a medley of stepping on men's feet and trying to follow the feet <laughs> diagrams and winding up in bizarre <laughs> positions. <laughs> Cut to exterior uh, uh, Arthur Murray Dance Studio. Laverne and Shirley leave wobbling down the street. <laughs> Cut to exterior Schatz Brewery, dead. <clears throat> Cut to the interior. A room in the brewery uh, is set up to look like a classroom. Laverne and Shirley, among others, are seated at desks, desks there. A man addresses them. The man says, good morning, I'm Nicky Schatz. Grandnephew of our beloved chairman of the board, Mac Schatz. And this is my brother, Dickie. We're quite excited with the turnout, and with most of the applications being not so illegible. <laughs> Cheryl is with her. I told you, don't underestimate the importance of good penmanship. <laughs> Dickie says to Cheryl, shh, I'm sorry. Nikki says, now the big question you, you must ask yourself is, why do I want to work at Schatz? Is it the gener generous salaries we pay? Laverne and Shirley seem encouraged. <laughs> no, it couldn't be that, because we don't pay them. <laughs> Is it the stimulating and creative work you get to do? People, we make beer. <laughs> Making beer is repetitive and boring. No, there are two main reasons why people want to work at Schatz. One, because the union broke up back, I mean, because of the successful negotiations with the union, Schatz now provides full health and dental coverage, plus full be uh, pension benefits, and to work at Schatz is to have a home for the rest of your lives. The says, well, what's the other reason we want to work here? <laughs> Nikki says, that you can't do better anywhere else. <laughs> Cut to interior brewery bottle capping assembly line. Shirley, Laverne, Nikki, and Dickie are there. Dickie says, girls, your aptitude tests show that you were both suited to work right here at, at, in bottle capping. The job is quite easy, actually. In fact, it's the cushiest job we have. Do you know what you have to do here? Laverne says, uh, Put the caps on the bottles. And he said, no, you moron. We have machines for that. <laughs> so I, I'm sorry for my derogatory outburst. 
Thank you for being sorry. <laughs> Nikki says, we can have, have 15,000 of these babies a day. How many do you think you can, you can cap by hand? 40 or 50 a day? Who could compete like that? Shirley says, nobody. <laughs> says, That's right, nobody. You're all right, follow me. They follow him to the assembly line. Dickie says, here's what you have to do. If you see a bottle come down the line and it's capped, do nothing. I repeat, do nothing. The girls react with some trepidation, nodding nervously. However, any time you see a bottle come down the line without a cap, pull it off the line. At the end of the line, there's a labeler. His name is Mo. Say hello, Mo. A hand comes up from under the end of the line. <laughs> hello, girls. <clears throat> Take it good. If you don't pull an uncapped bottle before it off the line. Before it gets to Mo, it'll spill all over him. You don't want that. I don't want that. And Mo has a long memory. And <laughs> says, but what do we do with the bottles we pull off the line? And he says, you put them on this rolling table and replace them on the part of the line where they haven't been kept yet. Nicky says, the line stops every two minutes. After 25 seconds, the line starts again. Dickie says, can you do this? Sure, I guess. <laughs> Nicky says, remember, we don't want waste and we don't want to get Mo upset. If there is any breakage, there's a broom to sweep it away. All right, girls, man your positions. Your mission is to save beer. <laughs> the line begins to move. There is an occasional capless bottle. The girls remove them, and when the line stops, they roll the table to the other side of the capping machine, placing those bottles in the line. The line begins again. This time many more bottles are, were not capped. So the girls scramble to get all the bottles on the table. The line stops. They, reach, they rush to move the table to the other side of the line. Several bottles fall off the table causing their contents to spill out. One bottle breaks as, as it falls. Laverne grabs the broom and, to sweep away the breakage. The line starts again. Laverne is lagging behind Shirley because of the sweeping. Many uncapped bottles come down the line. Shirley is grabbing them left and right and putting them on the table. One eludes her and spills on Mo. We hear his irritated reaction. We see his raised fist. After a montage of more attempts at successfully doing their jobs with the sorting slipping, sliding, dropping, and falling, we hear Dickie. All right, thank you, girls. Laverne says to Dickie, I guess we stink, huh? Dickie says, don't be absurd. You both achieved the second highest rating ever recorded for this test. Laverne says, really? Laverne says, but why didn't you hire the first highest? <laughs> Nicky says, oh, we offered it, offered it to them. There was a bit of a problem, though. There were religious concerns. This experience conjured up their visions of, what was it, Dickie? Dickie says, hell. <laughs> that was it, yes, hell. Cut to the turn and Shirley walking down the uh, city street again with their newspapers. Shirley says, I showered twice. I still can't get this bruised. <laughs> Laverne says, it wasn't so bad. Shirley says, it was 0 for 3. <laughs> Certainly isn't enjoyable. At least, uh, Laverne said, at least they wanted us. Shirley said, well, the pay is doodly squat. Laverne said, no, that's diddly squat. <laughs> yeah, that too. Said, they have a very good dental plan. Shirley says, and the men are nothing but gorillas, wimps, and lunkheads. A hand taps Shirley on the shoulder. We see, we see that it's squiggy. Hello! <laughs> we now see Squiggy. Squiggy says, uh, I saw you at the brewery, girls. Couldn't cut it, eh? Uh, Laverne says, Did your date ever show up for the prom? <laughs> Squiggy says, Let's leave personalities out of this. <coughs> Shirley says, We cut it. Laverne says, Yeah, we cut it just fine. Squiggy says, I see you still carrying around the newspapers. Still looking to see if Marilyn's go, going back with Joe DiMaggio? It's not going to happen. Get over it. <laughs>
I have, <laughs> the man said, Squiggy, they offered us the job. We just don't know if we want to take it. Squiggy says, you got to take it. It's like security for life. Now, what a dental plan. You see these? He points to his teeth, which are all crooked, and his face is between them. Yeah? Squiggy says, they're all there, aren't they? I'll give you that. Sherlock says, well, we still have to find an apartment. Squiggy says, I know an apartment that's right around the corner, and I'm telling you, the price is right. Well, how much is the, Squiggy says, the price is right. It's the brownstone with the sign in the window, number 232. Ask for Mrs. Lockwash. Laverne and Shirley look at each other and head around the corner. Shirley says, she still loves him. Laverne says, huh? Shirley says, Marilyn, she still loves Joe. Laverne says, get over! <laughs> they turn the corner and see the building. A sign in the window reads, apartments to let. Cut to an apartment door opening. A middle-aged woman appears. The woman says, yes. Shirley says, Mrs. Lockwash? Yes. Now, my name is Shirley, and this is my friend Laverne. We hear about the apartment. Laverne says, we hear the prices. Right. <coughs> and says, oh, you saw the ad. Shirley says, what ad? Laverne coming around. What ad? What a kidder. Sure we saw the ad. That's why we're here. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 